specifically a story out of Utah that has to do with social media. So Utah has apparently taken a very strange step and banned, passed a law which will ban all children under the age of 18 from registering for any kind of social media without their parents' explicit permission. Which is extremely weird. I, I don't really understand how this is going to work, right? Does it make a lot of sense to me? How are they going to enforce this? I, I have no idea. But basically, here's the um, idea. Like, here's here's what's going on with this law, right? And this doesn't start until, I think, um, July of this year, so there's a little bit of time, which they will need the time in order to implement some kind of, uh, you know, some kind of, of, of security measures that, to conform with this, you know, ridiculous law here, right? But what's going on in Utah? Well, basically, the law says that a parent's explicit consent must be um, must be obtained for anyone under the age of 18 in order to create an account on any kind of social media. So that includes things like uh, Instagram or Facebook or TikTok or you know anything else like that, Twitter, right? Which is fucking impossible. But okay, let's continue, right? Um, this will mean that uh, also the law says that your parents, if you're a minor, will have full access to everything you post um, as long as all of your private messages and all of the people that, you know, your friends list, stuff like that. So they will have complete control over your account. Uh, so there won't be any way that a child can hide anything from their parents, right? which is not necessarily a good thing, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, one other thing, which is really bizarre here, is that it will impro impose a curfew for everyone who's under the age of 18. So if you have one of these child accounts, then if you try to log on um, in between 10.30 at night and 6.30 a.m. in the morning, then you can you'll get a message kicking you off saying that, uh, you know, this is a curfew and you're not allowed to use social media in the middle of the night. I'm assuming this is so that, you know, your kid can't go to sleep and sneak their phone in their room and then, you know, go on TikTok or whatever when you're not paying attention. Right. Which is, okay, that's also going to be ridiculously hard to implement. Um, social media companies will no longer be able to collect data on children and also use that data to um, target advertising, which I think is the one good thing that this uh, law actually provides, you know, because uh, if you don't think that's happening with other social media, then you're solely mistaken. Remember, the reason why social media is free is because you agree to give all of your data to the social media company and that's how they make money they make money with um ad targeted advertising and i know you've all seen this happen you know you ever uh talk to your friends or your family or something and you'll be mentioning a movie that you want to see something like that right and then um before you know it an advertisement for that very movie that you wanted to see should pops up on your phone or you'll be on Facebook and you'll see ads for that movie, right? And you may not have even have searched for it. And it's like, how did they know that you wanted to see this movie? It's because your phone is listening to you, right? That kind of thing. This is how social media companies make money. This is how Google makes its money. This is why everything Google provides to you is free. You know, Google Sheets, Gmail, all this other stuff. All that stuff's free because... They're tracking every single thing you do using that money to uh, that tracking data and not just you, but everybody who uses their stuff, you know, they're using that to, um, you know, basically sell to uh, advertisers so that they can get targeted ads in front of your eyeballs, right? 
The Gaped Crusader, thank you for joining. Utah suddenly the number one state for VPNs. <laughs> right. Thank you for joining, man. Appreciate it. So, um, that's what's probably going to happen. Now, this is not necessarily a good thing. Because, first off, how exactly are they going to implement this, right? Because this is kind of the problem when it comes to, you know, you have to prove, you know, because you'll have to prove who you are, you'll have to prove how old you are, stuff like that, in order to be on social media, right? So, how exactly are they going to do this, right? And I remember something about in, um, you know, back in the early days of the internet, when they first started doing porn sites, and those became a big thing. A bunch of laws got passed saying that no children are allowed to access porn sites, right? And you'll notice that, you know, so what they used to do is that they would have like a thing saying verify if you're over 18 or not, right? Like that's supposed to like stop anybody, <laughs> right? And then they would say, oh, well, now you need a credit card in order to go on this website, you know, this porn site or something. Like that didn't stop anybody either. And you notice now the, the sort of tube sites, things like RedTube and Pornhub and and all of these other ones, right? They're just free, and there's no kind of age verification at all, right? Mainly because they're hosted in countries other than the United States where those laws don't apply. So that's the first thing. Second thing is it's kind of, they sort of gave up on that, that age verification stuff. There's no way to track it. You know, because all your kid has to do is just make a thing and then say, make an account saying they're 18 years old. So how do you prove to the social media company that you're over 18? Right. I mean, what, you get a credit card, you put, you have to put your driver's license in there. You know, that's like, who's going to do that? I mean, I'm not going to go on Facebook or Twitter if it requires my driver's license. Screw that. I'm not giving them my driver's license. <laughs> right. I'm not giving them uh uh, what the hell is this? Mace One. Want to offer oh, promotion of your channel? Delete. How do I delete this fucking guy? Pin this. Click to reply. Can I just delete that fool? I don't know. I thought this was illegal. Where you're? I thought you weren't supposed to be able to do this when you uh go on on Twitch. I thought you weren't supposed to be able to like spam shit with like other people's shit. But how come it's not letting me delete that? What the hell? <laughs> anyway, please ignore this. Ignore the spam in my chat. I don't know how to get rid of it. Anyway, so yeah, that's uh, that's no bueno. There's no way to actually enforce that without having these kinds of draconian measures, right? Things like requiring people to put their driver's licenses, requiring people to have a credit card, even if the site's free. You know, or making them sign up for some kind of, like, third-party service, which is most likely is going to happen. Now, here's the first thing, right? Now, if you're a small website, let's say that you're a, an up-and-coming social media thing that, you know, maybe, like, you're one of these sort of right-wing Twitter ripoffs, like Getter or Fapper or whatever the hell they're called, you know, stuff like that. Or maybe you're, you may, maybe you're just a new kind of social media place that you want to, you know, that you're brand new and you want to um, expand, now you have to basically conform to this law, right? So you either spend a whole ton of money trying to set up some kind of like, some kind of age verification thing, or your other option is to just not display yourself in Utah. So that's probably what's going to happen. A, a lot of social media places are going to be like, well, you're in Utah, you're, you know, your location is set as Utah, right? Or your VPN, your IP address is in Utah, whatever. And we're just not offering our services there. Sorry. <laughs> right? And the other alternative is that they're going to have to, you know, but Facebook and Twitter and, and you know, the, the big boys will be able to afford to implement some kind of solution there. So, you know, so that's the first thing. It's going to kind of stifle that, that uh, you know, that competition, right? that's going to stifle, it's going to prevent smaller companies from challenging the social media giants. So that's the first bad thing about this, right? Second bad thing is that, you know, how are they going to prove that it's only for kids, right? Because 
I guarantee you, your child is going to find a way to get around it. It's not going to, I mean, within 10 minutes of this, of whatever, you know, security that they launch, there, there will be a way around it. That's it. You know, and whether you need a driver's license number, whether they, whether they require you to put a credit card number, the kid is just going to go and get their dad's driver's license when he's like in the bathroom and use it to make an account. <laughs> right that's what'll happen and then they'll just have a driver's license or this you know then he'll have permission or whatever and it'll just be a fake account that his dad doesn't know of or some shit like that so that's the there will be a way around it. it's not foolproof right you know the third thing though is that there will be of course children who won't be able to get around it whether they don't have the technical know-how or whatnot and their parents will, of course, get access to all of their social medias, which is not necessarily a good thing. Because, of course, you know, part of the attraction of social media to teenagers is that, you know, to teenagers and, and uh, people who live in isolated areas, and in particular conservative areas, is that it allows access to communities which may not have a lot of representation in the area in which you live. I.e., if you are a young kid and you say you're gay or trans or something like that, you know, or lesbian or something, and uh, you live in a really conservative area like Utah, you know, Utah is highly conservative, right? State's practically run by Mormons, right? I mean, they own all the land there. They pretty much dominate Utah politics, right? So, um, may not have a lot of places in, you know, their waking daily lives where they can go to be with like-minded individuals, especially when they're young. They may be in the closet at their school or whatever, you know, high school, that kind of thing. Or then, or if they're out of the closet, that they may be getting picked on all the time you know, and uh, bullied and stuff like that, because in these highly conservative areas, you know, there's no love like Christian love, right, folks? So it could be pretty bad. And one of the things is, is that, well, online spaces may be one of the few sort of spaces where these people can, uh, can trust other people and converse with like-minded individuals and have a little bit of camaraderie right may be the only sort of places where they feel like they belong and it can be very bad for a kid who's in the closet for example another kid or maybe a, a child who's um you know being abused uh utah is a very highly religious state maybe a kid who's an atheist right and uh is hiding it from his parents because he doesn't want to get kicked out something like that right so this can be pretty bad stuff right it's there's really no way to no winners in this situation because here's the other thing right it's let's say for example um say facebook or twitter or something like that then requires people to give their real names and their real ages right because right now they sort of do like facebook says that you're supposed to put your real name but there's no verification it doesn't make you upload your driver's license. It doesn't make you put a birth certificate, something like that. It just says you're supposed. It says you're supposed to use your real name, and if they find out you don't, then you can get you know blocked or whatnot, right? But they don't enforce it. So now they're going to have to start enforcing it. So that means that lots of people are going to be unwilling to do this, right? And lots of people are going to end up getting kicked off of social media. There's a very good reason not to use your real name on social media, right? I mean, especially for kids, because, you know, if you're a minor, there's like predators out there. That's the first thing. But secondly, you know, if you say or do anything controversial, it's it's a, you know, like say, I don't know, make YouTube or stream on Twitch or something like that. If you do anything like that, right, then there's a good chance that you, if you could, may, you may say something that makes somebody angry, right? And that can lead to things like online bullying. It can lead to future employers, for example, um, when they do research on you before you get a job, finding your social media and then deciding not to hire you. 
<laughs> there's all kinds of reasons why that you should not use your social your real name on social media. I, I really don't. I, I don't use my real name at all, right? Although I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be hard to find out who I am. Anybody who's dedicated could probably find out who I am within within 15 minutes. It wouldn't be very hard at all, right? Because we all also we all also have a sort of a digital paper trail, and the longer you've been on the internet, the deeper that paper trail goes, right? And I I happen to be one of those people that you know if you Google my name, I'm very lucky because I have a common name. And there's, like, famous people with my name, so... Well, not famous people, but sort of semi-famous people. And their names pop up first in Google, so you have to kind of go a few pages in before you find out who I am. But a lot of people know. A lot of people, you know, if especially if you have, like, sort of a unique name, you may pop up, like, in the beginning, and it'd be really easy. Plus, there's also these sort of, like, public information sites, things like Spokio and, like, you know and uh, yellowpages.com and shit like that, and, or white pages, you know, that's another one, or there's like reverse phone number lookups, there's all kinds of places, if you just have somebody's name, you can really find out where they live rather quickly, just using um, publicly available information, so that's always another good idea to just never, never put your real name on social media, <laughs> right, like, ever, I, I don't at all, you know, you don't want to make it easy for people. Even though, yes, anybody can probably find me. It's like, well, why should I make it easy for them if they wanted to find me? You know what I'm saying? So anyway, um, but, you know, this this kind of stuff is, you know, there's an acceptable degree of, of risk when it comes to this, right? So, you know, if you want to be able to live in the modern world, you have to have a presence on the Internet. This is kind of how it is, whether that... You know, usually through social media. Some some jobs won't even hire you if you don't put your social media down, which I think is bullshit. <laughs> right. So this is just bad news for everything. It's going to lead to a lot of people leaving social media if this is enforced, right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to lead to a lot of people in Utah not having access to it. And then also a lot of kids who right now are sort of hiding behind that, like, you know, a nominee... Um, anonymous sort of um you know facade of the internet there like they may be forced to give that up and will just lead to basically more bullying and more suffering and why exactly do you think that this is a thing that's happening right because you know there are plenty of great reasons to restrict children from social media don't get me wrong plenty of great reasons everything from from online bullying to stalking to, um, you know, to uh, abusers and stuff like that, right? And then also, um, you know, potential uh, potential grooming, you know, that kind of thing. And when I say grooming, I mean grooming by actual predators and not, you know, gay or trans people. <laughs> right i mean like the actual real life sort of uh grooming by sexual predators that kind of thing right you know um because i mean how many horror stories have you heard over the years of somebody going on the internet and then like meeting a guy in a chat you know some like young kid going on the internet and then getting sort of like you know um hoodwinked by by someone and it turns out that it's like an older dude in his 40s or whatever who's just trying to like you know molest them that kind of thing like how many like stories have you heard of that right of like child predators taking advantage of young people all kinds of there's all million there's a million stories there so there's really good reasons to keep kids off of the internet but really i suspect the reason why this is happening though is most likely tied into the culture war, right? Because, really, Republicans don't pass anything nowadays anymore unless there's a component of the culture war in it, <laughs> right? It's, you know, highly unlikely that the... Uh, I find it highly unlikely that the motives behind this ban of social media is, is um, you know, pure... And it's probably 
has much more to do with like you know scared republicans trying to like prevent children from being groomed by the evil transes and that kind of thing right which kind of uh you know is sad i mean and ridiculous and uh which is why i find it like more plausible you know i mean if you really think about it conservatives and republicans and all that they don't really give much of a shit of what happens to your kid usually and in everyday life as long as you know as long as the kid is like not aborted in the womb they kind of don't care <laughs> right up to and including the child being blown away in a massacre hello folks if you like what i do and you want to support the channel please consider buying something from my sd shop supporting me on patreon liking and subscribing and checking me out across my social media links listed below thank you all so much and see you next time